Well, hello, Kelly Berry. How are you today? Pretty good, Lisa. How are you doing? I am doing good. I'm doing good. So what are we talking about today on today's boating broadcast? Well, uh, I'm rocking the fishing shirt today and the fishing hat today because we're talking all things fishing. Uh, we got Captain Carlos from Florida Sports Fishing. We're going to be having a great conversation uh, going over all the cool fish he's caught. Uh, we're going to kick it off actually with some headlines talking some nautique and delivering a new electric model. Uh, and uh, of course, talking to Landon with all things uh, social media, including some blue whales and a whole lot more. So looking forward awesome. to it. Welcome to From the Helm Boating Broadcast with Marine Max, bringing you the latest news and notes in the world of boats. Welcome to From the Helm Boating Broadcast. We are your hosts. I am Lisa. And as always, he is Kelly. Say hi to the folks. Hello, hello. <laughs> please interact with us in the comments section. And if you like what you see, please share it with your friends, your family, get your mom involved. The more the merrier. We'd love to hear from you. Yep. And for our audio only listeners, thank you so much for joining us. If you'd like to see what you're watching, check out Marine Max Leisure on Facebook or Marine Max Online on YouTube. We have a video version of the podcast, but you know mm -hmm. what? You just need your ears to listen to this because we're going to get into headlines and we're going to describe some really cool things going on in the boating industry. So For up sure. first, Nautique delivers its first all-electric production unit. Yeah, so, and so, we, you know, we were just talking about this and uh, it's uh, it's pretty amazing to see where the boating world is going these days. And Nautique is dabbling and in, in diving into the world of electric. Uh, so the GS22E is a new model coming from a Nautique Boats. And uh, it, it sounds like it's an electric model. Um, here we have, uh, first of its kind, the new uh, GS22E is a revolutionary electric towboat, unlike, uh, unlike anything else on the market today. So pretty crazy, Lisa, to see, uh, you know, uh, cars have been going this way and uh, now um, boats are going this way too. Uh, what does the yeah. future have in hold for boating? <laughs> I know. Well, like, you know, it's only a matter of time. So I actually saw this article originally in trade only. Jeff Moser did a nice write up about it. Mm -hmm. um, units have been delivered to clients in both the United States and Europe. So we should start seeing these uh, out and about. Um, yep. The award winning Ingenuity Ingenity, it looks like Ingenuity. Ingenity Electric <laughs> System operates using clean energy that delivers optimal performance for water sports activities in an eco-friendly package. So Ingenity is actually a parent company of Correct Craft's Watershed Innovation Group. Okay. Um, sub subsidiary whose focus is on sustainable propulsion solutions and other eco-conscious technologies. So they developed a uh, 124 kilowatt battery for use in the GS22E. Wow. So and that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And for the audio only uh, listeners here, um, I'm, I'm bringing up some specs here. So uh, usage time, two to three hours. So, I mean, you know, a typical time to get out on the waters, a lot of people just for a couple hours want to get out. So, you know, uh, you, you can be out there for two to three hours on a charge um, and uh, charge time. It's only 10 hours on AC and four hours on DC. Wow. Um, and there's a supercharger that you can charge in 1.5 hours. So, I mean, you know, if let's say you want to, uh, you know, go out for the morning, you know, catch some rays and, enjoy, you know, uh, enjoy your time on the water and then come back for lunch and then charge her up for an hour and a half and then get back out on the water for the afternoon. I mean, you can do it on this new uh, Nautique GS22E. Pretty cool. That is very cool. I guess we're going to start seeing some electric pumps at those uh, docking stations, huh? We're going to have to. Wow, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, so uh, you, you kind of see them at the, the gas stations and places around uh, for cars, but now, yeah, I guess uh, in the in the near future, you're starting to see that for boats too. I guess that's very cool. I mean, sustainability is, is everybody. You know, if you're a boater, you love your environment. You love boats. It's it's not that you're trying to pollute, but um, this is a great step forward for. I mean, I guess we'll see because not everybody has a an electric car yet either. So, well, I, it's it's definitely you know things that don't happen overnight, and uh, right. I'm sure that it's it's somebody has to take the first step towards uh, a different way of looking at things. And um, I think that there's there's benefits to both for sure. I think one thing would be really nice is just the silence of you know, your, yeah. which would be weird on a boat to just <laughs> not hear anything, just be cruising. That would be very 
interesting. Uh, but, you know, especially on a Nautique, you can probably hear your tunes a whole lot better if that's the case. <laughs> Very good point, actually. Very good point. Yeah. We'll have to get with our friends over at Nautique to see if we can get a little bit more information about this. So stay tuned for uh, some future episodes. Uh, I'm going to mm -hmm. I'm gonna ping them after we get done here. I need to know some more. And we'd love to hear from you guys. What do you guys think of the new Nautique GS22E? You know, uh, the world of electric boats. You know, we'd love to hear from you about that. Yes. All right. So moving on, uh, we have a cool article from USA Today. Mm -hmm. Everyone is buying boats. Yeah, geez. Uh, so <laughs> it's during the <laughs> pandemic and it's causing a short supply. So this is a cool article by Chris Woodyard from USA Today. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically, you know, we've, we've, we've talked about this before. Families have shunned airlines, hotels, cruises, and have crowded vacation options. You know, yep. they're, they're just not doing that this year. So instead, they've opted for a more personal transportation transportation choice. Sorry, tripping mm -hmm. over my words, um, making it easier to fend off the coronavirus. So we've seen it with recreational vehicles, bicycles, paddleboards, kayaks, and in this case, boats. Yeah. So I'm bringing up the uh, the um, article here. I had to get through through some ads and stuff, but uh, it's pretty cool to hear. I mean, you know, this is making USA Today. You know, there's there's a there's been somewhat of a shortage. Uh, just from a manufacturing standpoint, but it sounds like we're getting back to, to full production for sure. But uh, people are just wanting to get on boats. I think, uh, you know, we're just we're looking forward to talking to uh, the, the Captain Carlos in the near future here yeah. today uh, to talk about why, too. I think, you know, fishing is a big part of that as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know what? And that's an awesome transition. Let's let's get right into it. Let's start. Let's hear from our guest star today. You can find them on floridasportfishing.com, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. They're everywhere. Big fish, lots of information. Please yep. welcome Captain Carlos D. Rodriguez, Senior Account Executive of Cess Cubano Fisherman and co-host of the hit show Florida Sport Fishing. Welcome, Carlos. How What's are you doing? guys? How are you hey. doing? <laughs> Pretty good. How about yourself, sir? Fantastic. Fantastic. No complaints. So where are you coming from? Uh, where are you at today, Captain we're Carlos? We're hailing from Lighthouse Point, Papano Beach. That's where, that's our home port. So yeah, that is an excellent home base uh, for a fisherman. That's for sure. Yeah, kind of the mecca of uh, you know the the fishing and boating community for sure. You know, so yeah. Awesome. Well, well, thank you very much for joining us today. Happy to well, be here. I was I was perusing Facebook and I happened to see uh, an almost oopsies. Of, of Captain Carlos reeling in a whopper of a fish. So I wanted to start out by by showing this because yep. I mean, it, it's happened to a lot of people, I'm sure. You get something large on that line and you're fighting, you're fighting, you lose your footing for a second. <laughs> well, here we go. And, uh, and Captain Carlos, while this plays, uh, if you want to kind of just uh, give us a, a, an overview of kind of, you know, what's going through uh, your mind uh, during this, we'd, we'd love to hear it. So this was uh, one of the episodes that we were filming over in Boca Grande for Goliath Grouper. Um, and literally these fish will, will pull you in. You don't pretty much fight the fish, the boat fights the fish. So I oh had no drag or lock drag, should I say, on the reel. So it's pretty much locked up so you can pull a Volkswagen with it. <laughs> it you can see why I'm kind of slipping a little bit. And the other gentleman there was was giving me a hand because these fish are no joke. I mean, they will literally pull you into the water. Yep. Um, and the bait we're using, you know, we're not using, you know, a little piece of shrimp or anything. We're using baits that are four to five pounds. So, it, oh my gosh. Right. So what's the, you know, for, for those that, you know, are, are in a grouper fishing or, or that are looking to get into some of the larger grouper fishing, you know, what are some of the tips that you could give somebody to uh, to do it properly uh, and to have a good experience? Well, these are Goliath grouper. These are kind of like the king of the groupers. So most yep. people <laughs> won't target these, okay, just to give you a heads up, sure. um, because they don't want to deal with, you know, the, the problem of maybe going in the water okay yeah um, your average group of fishermen though i mean you know just a lighter setup than that that thing's like overkill because uh -huh. this is a, a different level you know um but yeah for your average family just a nice little setup um 30 pound class with a seven foot um 20 to 20 to 40 pound conventional rod um and you know you're Fresh bait, ballyhoo, mm -hmm. you know, whatever you can get your hands on, that'll work for, you know, red grouper on the Gulf or over here, you know, with our gag grouper and, and black grouper. 
So. Yep. Well, and, it, and, and grouper in itself are, are one of the uh, the main attractions for Florida fishermen, I guess. Um, you know, what are some of the things, what are some of the benefits of, of fishing for these? I mean, and, and where can you find them? I know uh, a lot of times they're down deeper in reefs. And uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, kind of how to hunt for the, the Goliath grouper. Well, Goliaths actually, you can get them in shallow too. Uh, you can yeah. them out. Yeah. I mean, I've caught them in six feet of water. Uh, around the Everglades and Jeez. down in Flamingo, yeah, fishing lures. But you can um, usually target them around heavy structure. That's where they're going to be sitting. So a lot of the, the bridges leading out to the ocean, um, you'll see them congregating there uh, on the patch reefs, anywhere between, you know, 30 and 100, 200 feet of water. Um, you know, that, that's kind of where the, they hold, wherever there's a, an abundance of life, you know, and they have a yeah. food source, you're going to find these things. So. Yeah, and I, I've seen some really cool videos of of pier fishing where they're just they're chucking baits right off the pier, and yeah, then those guys are nuts. <laughs> all these guys are just you know all these kids are just catching these little sea trout and stuff, and then right. there's some guy with you know hooked up to a Goliath right oh, off yeah. the pier there. Yeah, yeah and it's it, that's one of the things that we're very fortunate here in Florida because we do have access to that. You know, not only on the boat, but you, I mean, they, these fish you know around the piers, like you said. They, they live there too. So wherever their structure, uh, the opportunity yeah. to, to target fish like this are kind of endless in Florida. We're, we're lucky. That's very true. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we have it all down here. You can go lake fishing, you can go, you know, deep sea, mm -hmm. uh, inshore. There's just so many opportunities yeah. down here. Yep. Um, to kind of piggyback, I mean, I, I grew up pier fishing, believe it or mm -hmm. not. And that's kind of how I got launched into the whole, uh, you know, saltwater arena. Um, and, you know, these things were, I don't want to say a nuisance, but they've become a nuisance. Um, yeah. The Goliaths, they're actually yep. taking over the reefs a lot now. Um, so when, you know, a lot of the anglers are catching snapper and they're bringing it up or hooking a bonita, these things are coming up off the bottom mm -hmm. and eating the fish. So <sighs> I think, I believe the FWC is trying to, you know, regulate that and, and put some programs in place to to kind of combat that, but you know, the, the anglers also need to be aware of that as well. You know, well, I'm guessing they have no natural enemy other than us, right? Sharks. I mean, some Maybe. sharks, but there's been videos I've even seen online that the Goliaths have eaten four foot sharks. I mean, <laughs> like it's, it's crazy. They're, they are the king of, you know, the, the, the reef system for yep. sure. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So, well, Go, Go for ahead, it, Lisa. <laughs> well, I was going to say, I mean, you know, uh, seeing uh, some of your episodes and it's uh, th like you said, you know, there's just so many cool uh, species down here to catch. You know, what are some of the uh, what are some of your favorite species to catch and, and where would you find a lot of these species around here? Oh, you had to ask that question. didn't you? <laughs> um, so, I mean, I grew up inshore fishing and bass fishing, but then I, you know, you kind of progress, right? As you as you learn and uh, you, you move forward in your your angling career, so to speak. But um, I still, to this day, I love snook fishing and tarpon fishing, you know, mm -hmm. fishing the mullet run. Today is yeah. actually the, the day when the mullet um, run kind of signifies with snook season opening. So that's, it's a pretty big day in the fishing community, you know, for the, for the inshore guys. Um, with that said, though, once you, you know, venture out into the, the deeper blue waters of the ocean, I mean, sword fishing's pretty fun. You know, I got into yeah. the daytime sword fishing thing sail fishing, um, bottom fishing, I don't think I've, I'll ever get away from, you know, snapper and grouper, mutton mm -hmm. going down to the Keys, the Gulf. Um, we're, we're just, like I said, we're very blessed here in Florida. We've, <laughs> we've got it all, man. You can yeah. kind of do it all. So yeah. Certainly. Mm -hmm. uh, now, are, are you a run real guy or do you ever get in the water and, and pick up a spear or do some diving? Uh, I well? don't do the spear fishing so much. I've, you know, done the lobstering, uh, but yeah, more more of a rod and reel guy for sure. Just because uh, I've seen the amount of sharks that are around. Yeah. You no, know, I'm I'm not a not not a foolish person <laughs> that way. So um, yeah, I, I have a lot of respect for the sharks. <laughs> so that's yeah. good. That's good. Yeah. And um, it, one one thing that uh, I guess is uh, somewhat more recent for the Florida area is um, peacock bass in the Miami area. Have you ever done any? Uh, oh uh, yeah, yeah. Those things for freshwater. Fishing? For freshwater, by far, that is one of my favorite fish here. I mean, just because they fight like a saltwater fish, you know. Yeah. And they, I mean, they hit hard. They're aggressive. They're fast. Um, they're and they're colorful. I mean, I don't know if you guys have ever seen one, but they are just so lit up when when you hook them. 
They've got crazy colors. We actually have a couple episodes there on our YouTube channel where we went down to Miami and we filmed a lot of the urban canal systems down there. And, and you know, it's just incredible, the fishery down there. And I'll, I'll bring some images up for those who don't really know the peacock bass. So Lisa, this is a, I believe they're native uh, to South America, right? And then we they are, brought, up, brought them to Florida? Here back in the, in the 1980s, I believe, kind wow. of a, a test um, pilot program or whatever and they kind of took over because they're one of the strongest and most aggressive fish you know in, in freshwater here in florida so you could find them pretty much any major canal at least in southeast florida mm -hmm. um, they are very driven by warm climate so if you know they, they can't really go above the palm beach county line uh, you won't find them like in Orlando or anything like that. You know, we're that's right. another thing. We're we're very fortunate down here in South Florida. Right. I mean, not only do we have awesome saltwater fishing, but we have this. I mean, we have exotics in our backyard too. Yeah, is, that you can see why everybody kind of wants to move down here. You know, sure. we have all these opportunities. So. Well, and I know they say with opportunity also comes uh, potential issues. And I know we 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 really recently spoke with uh, a team about invasive species, and uh, you know, w with that opportunity to have the perfect climate for for certain fish, that also uh, provides certain issues. And in, in you know, um, I, I know that there's certain fish you can't even have down here. It's illegal to even put them in ponds and things because they'll thrive. Uh, even like piranha and stuff, uh, back yeah. up north, you can have them as a pet, but down here they say you can't have them as a pet because if you toss them in the waterways, they'll, they'll thrive. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, well, and that's a fish you really don't want to mess with. I would, no. <laughs> you know, so, um, but you know, piggybacking on what you said, there's, there's one that really kind of sticks out for invasive species that, uh, the FWCs kind of uh, really, you know, told anglers, you know, if you catch one, don't throw it back. You, mm -hmm. you want it to, you know, you want to harvest it or I think I know where you're going with this one. Um, yeah. They're, I think they were from. They also have them from, uh, you know, it's Malaysia Asia. or yeah, Malaysia and um, South America. But they they're wicked looking fish. You know, they um they kind of take over the area. They'll actually eat the peacocks. So that is the like oh kind of the top of the, the food chain, you know, because they're, they, they get a little bit larger. They get up to like 10, 15 pounds. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, is that, is that what kind of fish is that? It's called a snakehead. Snakehead. Yeah. You I'm thinking on, lionfish, but. No, this is more on the, the freshwater side. You'll yeah. A lot of canals that are loaded with like heavy vegetation. Because mm -hmm. they like the the heavy vegetation, I guess, and uh, the water temperature. They got to be in really warm water. So yeah, that's you, you just pulled it up. That's a wicked looking fish, and yeah, kind of gnarly. I mean, it's almost snake like, you know. Hence the yeah. name. Yeah. So yeah, they're very bizarre, and uh, I know. Yeah, up up north, they have them in a lot of places too, right? Um, so it's. Uh, yeah, yeah, they can they can tolerate a little bit of climate change for sure. Yeah, very interesting though. I mean, uh, but but we're we're definitely uh, that we're about the sport fish, and I'm sure you are too. So um, you know, uh, so anybody who gets the opportunity to get out on the water and, and just you know, one thing that we've always been talking about is is just you know the opportunity to get out on the water is is just a way to relax, and especially when it comes to fishing. So I mean, how how big is fishing? Uh, how big of a role has it played in your life to kind of just keep you <laughs> sorted and relaxed and uh, especially during a time like this? Uh, well, even prior to the pandemic, I mean, <laughs> it's fishing when you get into it at the level that, that, you know, once you get into this level um, it's, it's part of your life. I mean, you, yeah. you live it every day, you know um, it's not just a job. It's something you want to do. You know, it's, it's, you're passionate about it and you want to be out there as, as much as possible. Um, I've got two little ones at home. One of them just, um, he's about a month old, so I can't wait to get him out on the water, you know, and, and get him, uh, you know, acclimated to the, the environment and just yeah. seeing what mother nature has. It's, it's a beautiful thing, you know, so. For sure. No, absolutely. Well, and, and you're so lucky to be in a job that you have so much passion behind. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit more about Florida sport fishing. I know there's a huge focus on education and, you know, everything that we've been talking about. There's so many resources for people to get onto the water. Just give a little bit, give us a little more background about um, your company. Sure. So Florida sport fishing has been around since 2002. Okay, so a little while now. We've got a yeah. little bit of, of clout behind us. Um, we published Florida Sport 
fishing magazine. Um, the magazine's pretty high quality. Um, it's published bi-monthly, so six times a year. It's just enough to get people out on the water and keep them educated with what's happening on the, on the water. Mm -hmm. um, right. A lot of how-to instructional stuff, that's kind of our focus. So very family friendly. Um, a lot of tips, tricks that you know have worked for us, but we also work with a lot of the industry professionals, charter captains, you know, across the state. Um, probably expanded a little further than that over the years. You yeah. know, working with guys down in in the Bahamas, you know, Panama, Alaska, because um, wow. we do have a, a piece in every issue of the magazine that's titled Destination Fish, where we kind of target an exotic destination. Mm -hmm. um, so, but the core is saltwater fishing and boating, Florida and the Bahamas. Um, we also have a um, pretty large online presence. We just yeah. relaunched our website about a month ago. Mm -hmm. uh, that was almost a year in the making, as you can imagine yeah. all the information we have in the background. It's 20,000 plus pages of resources and information for you guys to absorb, yep. which, which is awesome. You know, that's, that's our goal. Again, just focusing on the education, um, anything from recipes to um, learning, you know, the, the latest trends in, in line or reels, rods, um, also have a, a great fish ID. So if you guys are out on the yeah. water and you want to just pop up your phone and you actually have, you know, a connection there where you're at <laughs> and what, what kind of fish you caught, we have it right there on the, on the website, which is a pretty awesome resource, you know? And, and that is a resource that quite often you need. I mean, there's certain times where you're out yep. there and you're not expecting to catch something somewhat strange and you're like, what the heck is this? And if you have a, a resource like this, I mean, you can you pop it up right away. Right, right. Well, that, that, that's our goal, just to try and make it easier and accessible for, for people when they're out on the water. So um, we also have a, a television series, as you guys, pre you know, spoke about a little yep. bit yeah. earlier. Um, so with Florida Sport Fishing TV, our goal was to pretty much mimic the magazine, but bring it to life, you know, in front, in front of you guys, 3D. Uh, we try to keep it a little entertaining and some humor in there too, but obviously the, the focus is um, education. So you'll see in every episode that we highlight, you know, a rigging station, go over, mm -hmm. you know, the tackle, uh, how we're doing it, the kind of bait that we're using, um, you know, every little tip that we like to, to use, we, we try to share that with, with our audience. Um, we, um, we run yep. a 39 CV mercury powered. It's not a bad platform for the offshore. No. It's probably the, the premier boat down here. Um, but that, that enables us to do what, what we need to do, you know, cover, covering a lot of the, the fishing across the state and the Bahamas. So, well, and I know, uh, it, as a little kid, I used to watch fishing shows and it seemed like that they would catch a fish every 30 seconds in the show. And I'm like, and then I go up there and I'm like, this is going to happen to me too. And then it takes, you know, an hour or two before you, you mm -hmm. land something and it's usually a, a little bluegill or something. So, um, you know, what does it take to uh, put together a fishing show like this? You know, and, and do you have like a, a crew out there? How does it usually work with actually filming and then bring it it to the to the TV or to the internet screen. That's a question I get asked at almost every boat show, and it's <laughs> a pretty awesome question that uh, you know to answer because a lot of people take it, um, you know, I guess I don't want to say for granted, but they don't really know everything that goes on in the background. Yes, we have a full crew of guys um, that are are videoing. Um, we've got a drone crew that's you know yeah. flying a drone as well. So yeah, it, it's it's a lot of work in the background. Sometimes we get a, a show filmed in one day. Sometimes it doesn't happen in a day. Sometimes it happens <laughs> in multiple days. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, keep in mind, we, we got to also work around the weather. So the weather kind of right. dictates what we're able to do, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's a lot of moving parts to filming a show and um, you know, it's, it's cool to see the process, the editing process behind it. That, that takes, uh, as you guys can imagine, you know, oh, yeah. uh -huh. several weeks behind. So it's it's a lot of work, but you know, again, it's going back to the the point that we mentioned earlier. It's not work if you love it, if you're passionate Great. about it. So yeah. Well, I think uh, you mentioned drones too, and especially for fishing, uh, it's I think it's been a game changer just um, to to see your surroundings too. There's been so many great videos that you see where when you actually get up high you can see what's going on around you and you kind of see a school of fish off, you know, you see some action 
far off, but if you get a drone over top, it's just incredible some of the times, you know, if it's tuna or, or dorada or whatever it is, right. just to see that stuff in action over top. It's Yeah, it's a different amazing. perspective. It, it, yeah. it brings people to a life perspective that you've never really had before. So that seeing that from a different angle, so to speak, um, just to give you an example, we this was years ago, we filmed a show, it was a kite fishing show, and we were actually able to hook up a camera to the kite. So the angles yeah. that we were able to get shooting down on the boat was just insane. Mm -hmm. you know, it's it's pretty neat what, what technology's enabled you to do, uh, even in the last 10 years, you know? Right. So, yeah. I've even seen a drone take a lure off the shore, bring it out to a school of fish, drop it off right into yep. the middle and hook somebody up that way. I don't yeah. think that would fly in a, a you know a tournament or anything like that. But no I way, no tournaments down here are hot and heavy and they're fast. So that that's maybe something for like if you're in Canada on a lake, quiet, you know, yep. clean away from everybody else. Yeah, no, yeah. not not here. <laughs> Tell us about the tournaments. Uh, are you involved in any of the the, the tournaments? And uh, you know, what do you guys fish for usually? So yeah, I mean we've we uh we. I've fished many tournaments. Um, typically, there are a lot of the local ones here that um, are run by uh, by the Saltwater Circuit um, in Pompano Beach, you know, lighthouse mm -hmm. area. Um, but it's kind of, like I said, the mecca of saltwater fishing. And a lot of them are uh, meat fish tournaments, what we call. So, you know, fish that you could take home for dinner. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tuna, dolphin, wahoo, kingfish, uh, cobia, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Very, very competitive. I mean... Like I said, this is the, the boating capital of the world. So if you want to learn how to fish against some of the best teams, just go right down the okay. road. I mean, we have them here. Yep. yep. Everybody comes here to learn because we have, fortunately, we have a, a very tight knit community, fishing community that, you know, they're, they're there and they're competitive. Mm -hmm. so, yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, I know we've got the Marine Max fishing team down in that area. Our uh, buddy Anthony Armeo works out of the Marine Max Pompano store and they... Okay. Yeah, they do some fishing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I had the opportunity of being aboard the Hatterascal, the Hatteras. I think it was a fifty-four GT at the time uh, with Ken Rita down in the uh, uh, Ocean Reef area, uh, and just I mean the amount of preparation that goes into those guys, and just the amount of determination and excitement you can just see it. Like when it comes to these tournaments, it's just it's part of life for them for sure. So yeah, uh, yeah. it's really cool. Yeah, I'll piggyback on what you said with preparation. That's another thing. Like, if you're going to really get into tournaments, be prepared to spend time rigging, getting your baits yeah. in order. I mean, like, the boat, you know, double-checking everything's in tip-top shape, and, you know, you're, you'll avoid any other hiccups there. But it is it is a lot of work, but it's also, um, you know, it's fun. It's mm -hmm. a lot of fun. Yeah. So, yeah. Now I've only been deep sea fishing a handful of times, so that could be the reason. But every day, the day after, I am so incredibly sore. I cannot <laughs> believe it because, it, yeah, it feels like I'm working, but I could not believe how sore I was from reeling in some of those fish. Yeah, uh, I mean, they, they can put a, a strain on you. And, and <laughs> going back to the, even on the tournament side, you know, some of these winter tournaments coming up, like the sailfish tournaments, those guys – Keep in mind, they're they're going in three to six foot seas. So you think you're getting yeah. beat up out there now? Those guys yep. are being pounded. I mean, you know. So, yeah, uh, you, you got to pick and choose your battles, I guess, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, has Seakeeper uh, made a difference in, in your world? I know a lot of people have sea keepers in their boats these days, especially some of the fishing boats. So when you get way offshore and there's swells. Uh, you know, it can like like Lisa was saying, it can take a toll on you. Have you had any experience with the Sea Keeper? Yeah, that's it's a great great design for the the bigger high performance center consoles mm -hmm. and the sport mm -hmm. fishers. Um, the guys again that time of year when they're sail fishing and they're putting you know setting up a drift and they're just drifting with with kites and and live bait. That's where the the Sea Keeper can definitely make a difference, you know, and just keep everybody more, a little more comfortable on the boat, you know, mm -hmm. when, when the weather's a little, you know, gnarly out there. Yeah. It can get a little rough. And, um, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the other one, uh, pilot, uh, the mercury, what am I thinking of Lisa, where it kind of keeps you in one place, uh, uh, uh sky I want to say sky hook. Yeah. Have, have you had sky any hook. experience with G the mercury? GPS anchor basically. 
Yeah. Yeah. We actually had uh, a, a couple demo boats that we ran with that. And it's, it's amazing the technology that's available now. I mean, who would have thought just a few years ago that some, somebody would come up with something like that. It's, it's really neat. Absolutely. So. Yeah, it is very cool. Well, I know the boating industry has been very, very popular. It is it's one thing you can do and socially distance with your entire family. So we've got boats flying off shelves. There are a ton of new boaters in, you know, in our ecosystem. Mm -hmm. um, for those that want to get started fishing and they want to go, you know, let's say offshore. What are some suggestions you could give them? Uh, read Florida Sport Fishing Magazine. <laughs> <laughs> or check out our show. Um, no, uh, use use your resources. You know, before yeah. you go out, just don't go out blindly. I mean, do a little bit of homework at home. Spend spend some time looking up. Um, you know, stuff on our website. Not just our website. The FWC. There's a, there's a ton of other resources out there. Yeah. Um, maybe even yeah. go to your local tackle shop. You know, talk to the guy. There you go. There. That's always good. You know, they you know they're on the bite and they let you know what's what's happening. Um, keep an eye on the weather, obviously, because that's going to dictate whether you're going to go out or not. You know, <laughs> yep. Uh, little things like that 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 all can add up to having a, a more positive experience when you do go out there. So, right. I think. So I think you just basically nailed be prepared. It's it's it right. comes down to right. not blindly going out being like, hey, it's going to be a great out, great day on the water and we're going to you know it's like, hey, you know, have your stuff ready to go, make mm -hmm. sure you have a backup plan, make sure you check the weather, yeah. make sure you you know you kind of know what you're getting yourself into as opposed to just blindly going out and dropping a line and hoping that uh, a Goliath grouper is going to <laughs> nail the other end. <laughs> I don't pray that for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the what's the craziest place you've gone fishing? Uh, have you been all over the world fishing, or what's you know um, where are some of the more interesting places? I haven't been all over the world, but I've been to certain parts of the world. Um, one of my favorite places, I've probably got two at the top of the list: Bahamas. I mean, because it's so mm -hmm. close and the fishing there is is insane. Um, but Panama, Panama is yeah. a pretty pretty phenomenal place. Um, I call it Jurassic Park because you don't know what the hell you're going to hook into. So I mean, awesome. yeah, it's, it's it's really neat. And then the just to see the the landscape a little bit different. That's that's yeah. always cool too. The culture, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, but yeah, I mean, and going back to, I mean, it's nice to visit, but there's nothing like Florida. You know, sure. going back to your home state because we we do have pretty damn good fishing here, and you know the around the entire state. So, oh yeah. I, I heard in uh, in Costa Rica, it's big with rooster fish. Do they have roosters down in uh, in, in Panama as well? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty much the same coast. You just go a little further further north, but Panama is probably better actually for rooster fishing, just because it's not as heavily pressured. Costa Rica over the years, you know, a lot of people have, have always traveled there just because they, I guess, they marketed well, <laughs> you know, to, sure. to get yeah. people down there. But um, but yeah, Panama is just as good and. It's it's crazy because those fish you could actually target right from the beach there too, um, because the the cliffs drop off sixty feet right from the rocks right there. Ah. Yeah. You know different different contour lines that they have down there as a, as opposed to here too. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and wow. the, for those uh, viewers out there, we'd love to hear the fish that you catch all around the world because of course you know. Depending on where you are in the world, there's different species, and uh, like you said in Panama, you never know what you're going to get. Um, in, in in different parts of the world, it's certainly uh, the same. Um, one fish I've always been extremely excited to catch, and I think uh, one day I will definitely because you kind of have to travel across the world to get there. Uh, GT, have yeah. you ever uh, Giant or Valley? Have you seen? I'm sure you've seen some videos. Uh, would you be interested in one day maybe catching a, a Giant or Valley? Uh, um, yeah, I mean, get it off the bucket list would be good. Those things get up to 150 pounds though. And that's no joke. They'll, they'll break your back. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, Talk about being but, sore the next but, day. Yeah. With that said, I mean, I, I guess I've caught in the, the little brothers to them down in Panama. They have bluefin trevally. They, they get, um, you know, not as big, but they, they pull pound for pound. They're one of the strongest fish for sure. Yep. You know, so yeah. Yeah. yeah, bring them in just because they are just incredible fish. Uh, I think they call them like the wolves Woo. of the sea or something like that. And just uh, yep. incredible yep. fish and, and the amount of power. I think uh, you've seen videos of them eating birds too, you know, just uh, <laughs> like they're, they're the power behind them. Um, but like you said, I mean, they, there's some close uh, relatives in the Florida area that are also good sport fish as well. Um, it's, 
it's uh, it's it's no joke if you're fighting them on light tackle. Um, I call them Florida GTs. So, <laughs> uh, and they and they're they're fun. You know, this time of year you'll actually see a lot of them just cruising up and down the intercoastal and and the beaches. So, yeah. and what kind of fish was that? Jack Cravel. Jack Cravel. Okay, I missed yeah. I missed the first part. Mm-hmm. All right. Awesome. I'm put that away. Too much tech. I'm like excited <laughs> to see all these different fish. So. Yeah, I mean, Kelly could sit here and talk fishing stories with you all the time. Hey, you ever want to catch this? You ever want to catch that? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But well, here know. I have a couple oh. pictures too. So uh, uh, please yeah. go for it, and I'll I'll show a couple shots here. Yeah. Uh, well, I, if people through. are interested in in any more information, FloridaSportFishing.com has so many great resources. If you start with where you want to go, they have an offshore section, they have an in inshore section, and a freshwater section. So figure out where you want to go. Mm-hmm. Start there. They've got the fish ID section of the website. So once you do reel something up and you're like, what, what the heck did I just catch? You can go there and mm-hmm. figure it out. And, and you know, do you throw it back? What are all those rules? Uh, yep. You know, be, be sure to, to hit up the FWC so you know what you're doing there, too. Mm-hmm. All right. What are we looking at here? So that is a snowy grouper. That was snowy caught, grouper. Yeah, that was caught on a, on a jig, a, a metal mm-hmm. jig, um, you know, pretty much just right outside our home port and well, almost 600 feet of water. So wow. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what do we got Gorgeous. here? That's a golden cowfish. That was from one of our recent episodes. And that was uh, you know, here just fishing out front. And we had a pretty good day that day. We caught like three or four of them that day. Nice. So and they and they usually, you know, they're out in the deep as well. So we're using um electric reels for those. Okay. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Yeah, so that's a that's an interesting fish, and uh, I mean, a lot of these uh, what happened? A lot of these uh, these fish are are just down deep, right? So you just what you just drop it straight down and into the the, the deeper reefs and stuff for some of these. Um, the grouper again, they're they kind of hold the structure, you know, mm-hmm. some type of rock or rubble, whatever's down there. Uh, but the the tile fish, they're actually a little bit different. They they prefer like mud flats, so they kind of sit in the mud in burrows. And they wait for bait to come by them, and then they just kind of pop out, eat the bait, and then go back in their burrow. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Kind of like a flounder or something. Right. A similar. Fish. Similar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Lisa, what is the fish that you've never caught that you've always wanted to catch? Y- yeah, all the fish. <laughs> <laughs> I actually really enjoyed catching porgy because I I I don't like the taste of many fishes. Mm-hmm. Actually, I did like some uh, lightly fried blackened porgy. I went out deep. That was one of my deep sea fishing adventures, and I pulled it up, and I had no idea what it was. I don't even know. I didn't know what a porgy was. I didn't know that that was the type of fish, but it's delicious, and I highly <laughs> recommend catching those again. And I did see that on your on your list on your website. The fish ID uh, was there. The porgies, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. they're they're delicious. I I think they're better than snapper personally. I mean, the meat is very flaky and it's white. Um, yeah, look look forward to always hooking into those things. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. We took a, a group off um, just off the coast of St. Pete and went out a little offshore fishing and came back. The guys filleted everything right there at the dock. Mm-hmm. And we took it in bags to a restaurant right down the street and said, hey, we want you to cook this for us. Here's how. And they brought it back to us with like some coleslaw. Like, it was it was a very great. It was mm-hmm. a great day. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Yes, it uh, is. Captain Carlos, what about yourself? Uh, what's a fish that you've uh, you've never you've never caught, but you've always wanted to catch? Oh, um, I mean, most I'm lucky and yeah. blessed because I've caught most of the ones <laughs> here in Florida. But um, marlin's still on the bucket list. I have okay, a lot of marlin. I've caught swordfish, sailfish, a lot of the other billfish, but a black marlin uh, that's yeah. definitely on on my list. That's why I went down to Panama. <laughs> so, but yeah. you know, they just didn't cooperate that day. But, um, but yeah, Marlin, um, I mean, a lot of the exotics, I guess, you know, mm-hmm. stuff that you're just not used to seeing, um, yep. deep water stuff. Um, you know, there's, there's too many to list still to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Well, awesome. the ocean's a big place, and I mean, especially black marlin, they're a bit more elusive than even a blue or a, definitely a striper. So yeah, um, I guess it's got to be in the right place at the right time, at the right time of year, with the right tackle. I mean, I mean there's just so many variables that can go into it. And even if you have all that stuff, 
you never know. You just yeah, never know. Yeah, you've got to cooperate too. That's <laughs> that's priority, right? <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. For sure. Well, well, good. Um, hey, we thank you so much for joining us. Uh, like I said, Kelly could talk fish stories with you all day. Yeah, <laughs> we keep know, going. You you have a, a brand new website to run and a magazine to get out. Um, so the latest edition I did see is on your website. So it, it, it can people can access it there, correctly? They can. We actually have a digital version of the magazine too, or we have digital subscribers. They can do that right there online. Um, a lot of the um, the people that want to sign up for just the print publication and have them mailed to them, we're kind of throwing a bonus that you're getting the digital now. So that's a little promo yeah. for that going. Um, so yeah, again, it's just trying to get as much information out as we can to them to keep them more informed with what's going on. So that's awesome. Yeah, I know we've got a ton of people that joined us in the boating industry. So they're going to be a lot of people getting into fishing. I think this was just year number one. It's getting the boat, experimenting and getting the family out. Year number two is how do I actually want a boat? Am mm-hmm. I that, you know, wake sport guy or am I that fishing guy or gal? So, well, and, and you don't even have to be one or the other. I mean, there's a lot no, of things, especially a, a lot of these people, yeah. you know, they're not yeah. just starting fishing. They've, they've been fishing their, their whole lives, but maybe they started a family or they've taken 10 years off because they've been we're focusing on their career and on land. And it's like, Hey, at this point, you know, it's uh, let's, let's start getting back out there and, uh, and doing the things you love um, and, and fishing. I know for a lot of people, that's one of the things that, you can't always do, but or you can do, but you just have your priorities have changed. So let's hope mm-hmm. uh, more people get back out on the water. For sure, uh, everybody will, will stay happier that way, and maybe uh, the world will change and even be a happier place too. <laughs> so, I second yeah. that. I definitely agree. I agree. Yes, yeah. or you can just get a, get a job like uh, Captain Carlos here. Uh, and you get to, okay. Yeah, it's that easy. All, all day long. Uh, I'll go. I'll go fishing. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. awesome. Captain Carlos D. Rodriguez, thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to let you get back to your your day. Any final thoughts from you? Um, no, I mean, just get out there, be safe, be have etiquette when you're out there fishing or boating. Yeah. That I, I can definitely express. I see that out on the water almost every time I go. Just be more aware of your surroundings when you're out there and have respect for the environment as well as your fellow fisherman or, or boater. Well Very said. well said. Yeah. Any last last questions or, or fish you'd like to mention, Kelly? Um, hey, Captain Carlos, I do have a fish I have to show off real quick for you. Uh, so this was a uh, this is a large bull, uh, mahi dorado, whatever you want to call it, off yeah. of uh, right off the shore. Uh, my dad's place down in Mexico. In so Cabo? yeah, yes, yeah, right off uh, near yeah. Cabo. And uh, all the locals, when I was telling them about it, they're like, "No way, no way, no way." That that's never done. And uh, I think I was just like we were saying in the right place at the right time. So. Uh, that kept uh, my wife and I fed for for the entire trip. That's for sure. It was great. That's awesome. So. They do they do catch them quite a bit down there off off land. It's one of the only places that I know where mm-hmm. you can target mahi and dolphin like that, which is that's insane. Right off the beach, pretty much. So yeah, yeah. ton of fun though. Mm-hmm. I mean, just uh, one of the best fish to catch too, and they're plentiful even in Florida, especially too. So oh yeah, that's that's one of my favorite fish to to catch on light tackle. You know, we always look forward to a mahi show because. They're so colorful too, you know? Yep. So, oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. for sure. Well, I had to show that off to, a, to a, <laughs> somebody like yourself. Who's, uh, he's probably like, ah, uh, seen it, uh, you know, dozens no, of no, dozens. no, no. I always, I can always appreciate a, a beautiful mahi, you know, beautiful dog <laughs> for sure. That's great. Well, thank you, Captain Carlos. We appreciate your time today and, uh, definitely everybody check out Florida sport fishing.com. Um, mm-hmm. and, and, uh, you know, check out that fish ID. It's really cool. Um, I, I spent some time in there and I only, t- you know, broke the surface of you know, just going through some of the, the different species on there. So really cool stuff. Yeah. And check out our YouTube channel. If you haven't oh, seen yeah. the show, okay. Because we archive all the episodes on our YouTube channel. So you use awesome. it as a resource as well. Okay. And that's Florida sport Excellent. fishing on YouTube as well. Yeah. You go onto YouTube and just type in Florida sport fishing. We pop right up. Perfect. Well, yep. check yep. them out on, on YouTube. And uh, I mean, I'm sure you could get, you know, lost in, in a, in fishing <laughs> videos all day long. Oh sure. yeah. They're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, too. So give them a follow, floridasportfishing.com. Thank you again, Mr. Carlos Rodriguez. We uh, would love to have you back sometime. Hopefully, we get to see you out on the water sometime. For sure. Hopefully. We'll we'll, we'll (laughs) pass out there. There's enough boats out there now, for sure. So Yeah. No (laughs) kidding. Awesome. Well, thank you, sir. Have a great day. All right. Take care. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. All right.
What do you want to bet he's going fishing? Uh, yeah, I think he was kind of like, all right, uh, enough of this. <laughs> Let's uh, get back out on the water there. And, and I can't wait to get back out on the water too. I mean, uh, I know. You know, living in Florida is like he was saying, you know, I mean, there's just so many different opportunities to go fishing and, uh, you know, you can go to the local pond and catch one of the biggest basses of yeah. your life, or you can go right off, you know, inshore and uh, catch snook right off the beach. I mean, it's, it's opportunities are endless down here in Florida. <laughs> All right. You know what? Well, let's get into our social update today. Sure. Uh, let's bring Landon in to take a look at what's going on in the social media world because there are lots of uh, really cool fish videos that get shown there too. Okay, and before I bring him on, we did not plan this. I swear we did not plan uh, what you're about to see here. So uh, <laughs> Landon is wearing the same, uh, we, we heard fishing shirts and we're doing a fishing episode. Landon, you got it. We, shirt buddies today. Uh, yeah, I mean, the truth is out. So Kelly and I text every morning. What are you going to wear? Let's match up. Let's, yeah, yeah. Even totally the Marie random. Max hats, too. It's like it's all, it's uh, all it's in today. It's twin day. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Awesome. What's up, guys? Hey. hey. Just talking fishing, man. Yeah. Yeah. So that was that was some really interesting stuff there. And um, so wanted to also bring up something. So every Monday we've got these we've got these boating broadcasts that are premiering on Thursdays. But every Monday we've also got boating tips live, which mm -hmm. happen, happens with uh, Captain Keith and Captain Nick. Uh, so next Monday we are going to have uh, ask us anything about boat service. And it's going to feature a team member from uh, Marine Max Baltimore, Donnie Rogers. Awesome. So make sure yeah. to tune in at 3 p.m. on Mondays. We've got Boating Tips Live, which is actually live, and they can respond to any boating-related questions you might have. So, Well, and I know everybody always has questions. You know, you, you talk to somebody, and, and you tell them you're in the boating industry. They're like, hey, I have a question about my boat. How does this work? Oh, yeah. and it's like, <laughs> here's your opportunity to literally sit with two of the, the, the most genius of all boaters uh, <laughs> that we know for sure and uh, ask them any questions they may have and of course you know having a team member from the baltimore service team uh is is always huge too so that's great yeah no, yeah exactly like we were saying earlier there are a ton of new boaters and service is a big part of making sure that your your vessel your investment is you know working properly and maintains good condition for the life of of the boat salt water can be a little corrosive so things mm -hmm. you might not know just if, even if you don't have questions tune in learn a little bit something about how to take care of your boat Awesome. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's get into this. Cause I haven't seen any of these videos yet and I, I need to. What should we All start right. with Landon? I got, a, I got a few here. There's some good ones here. So this first uh, video that I found on social media was uh, a blue whale sighted and um, actually comes from a compilation of videos where it's off the coast of San Diego um, where these guys oh, put their drone up in the air anytime they they're able to spot this these blue whales. Yep. And uh, so yeah. And the funny thing is, Lisa, you're looking at this blue whale next to this fishing boat center console, and you think it's ginormous, and it really is. I bet but it's a baby. It, yes, that's what I was going <laughs> to say. In in terms of the actual size that blue whales can get, this guy is not that big. So. Wow. Pretty, pretty interesting stuff. You know, blue whales are endangered oh. right now. There's, there's really only, they, they think between 10 to 20,000 in the world. Wow. Um, because in the early 1900s, whaling was super popular and kind of killed off a large population of blue whales. Uh, in the sixties, wow. they actually, you know, nixed whaling said, stop that, mm -hmm. you know, put laws in place to make sure that that stopped becoming so prevalent to try to save the species. So yep. at this point today, we've got 10 to 20,000 that are out there. They're still endangered even after the 60s when they put those new laws in place. Yeah. Gorgeous creatures, the largest living animals uh, on earth right now. Um, such a cool video. Can you imagine being in that boat? No. Yeah. <laughs> Whales are awesome. I think that they're, you know, it's it's maybe it's because we're all mammals or something like that. But I think, you know, humans just love... Uh, uh, whales no matter what I, I just recently watched a video where it was somewhere in like washington it, it looked like you were in a lake but it was actually kind of you know like an inlet or something and yeah. all these people are watching like you're like what are they looking at they're looking at the water you see some bubbles in the water and then sure enough you know uh there's a uh, some sort of uh, i'm trying to think of it, humpbacks i, th I think there were humpbacks that were breaching mm. and kind of eating the oh, plankton gosh. but like it's just it's magical I, it just like I, you know, I, 
that that was going to be my point. I think the draw is something that large, that huge, being so graceful and peaceful. They mm-hmm. don't travel in huge groups. They only travel one to two, and they're they're apparently really they we think they're affectionate. So there's a video. Um, maybe we can show it next week, but there's a video of a blue whale almost saying thank you to some sailors that saved it um, in a in a situation. But yep. yeah, there. I mean, something that huge you think yeah. would be so dangerous and scary, but really they're graceful and they're peaceful, and it's it's a beautiful thing. I love that video. Yeah, very I cool. I love when he comes up and he just takes a breath. Yeah, it's like he's saying, "Hey guys." Yeah, yeah. So blue whales, they don't, they can't breathe underwater. They have to surface to be able to, to be able to breathe. And super cool. Landon, yeah. I think, I think Marine Max needs a nature show too. Could you yeah. run our nature show? <laughs> of, I'd love it. You could be like the Steve Irwin, just like going in and being like, okay, what do we have right. here, guys? Crikey, we got the blue whale over here. <laughs> I'll work on my Australian accent before we get into any of that stuff. So, oh, you pretty awesome. much nailed it. Things well, to look yeah. forward to. Very cool yeah. video, and uh, you know, just check it out. It's uh, it's always really cool to see, and especially you know, anytime you get on a boat, if you see whales, if you see dolphin, it's always yeah. just such a cool thing, and, and part of the boat ownership uh, of just being out there one with nature for sure is always cool. And one yeah. one one thing I always like seeing too on on like Instagram and stuff is being in super exotic locations, like some of these boats in in large yachts are down in like the Arctic or various places like that, and you see like massive whales or, or just all this life, you know, all this life that you would never see if you were just kind of sitting at home. Yeah. Um, you can, it, it's basically like your, you know, your playground or your zoo, but you're living in it on your boat. Oh yeah. Uh, you, we see enough videos of hump. So like the blue whale just surface just to get air, but like the humpback whales that come up and just, you know, you're just going along in your little boat and then a huge humpback <laughs> whale comes in and breaches. I mean, that's gotta be one of the top 10 coolest things you could see in your lifetime. Oh, for sure. As long as it doesn't land on the boat. That's all I I don't think they typically do. No. Yeah. You don't see the video of them leaning on the boat. I'm sure they can see it or sense it, but. They're pretty aware. So that's cool. So that that was the the first social video I wanted to show you. There's a second one that was actually shared by Marine Max team member, Mike Bader. um, Out. Uh, He shared this on LinkedIn. And I thought it was really cool. Is it it's an Azimut Verve 47, so kind of a newer model. Yep. This is another Hallover Inlet video. So Hallover Inlet, of course, near Miami. It's the classic place where you see videos of, you know, boats going through crazy chop. Sure. Um, this yeah. looks like this is like Miami Vice or something, man. This is. Oh like, yeah. We need some like yeah. cool like 80s music to go with this or something. <laughs> I was just gonna say that. Yeah. So you know. Gorgeous boat, gorgeous model of Azmit, um, but this Ver 47 is is just crushing it through a Hallover Inlet, and um, they're up for an award, aren't they? Yes. The Ver 47. They, they are a finalist in the World Yacht Trophies uh, mm-hmm. uh, competition, so we just got word of that today. So wanted to share that as well. So congratulations to Azimut for their Ver 47. Yeah, clearly it, a magnificent vessel. Look at it go. It's a gorgeous boat. Yeah, and what it does is. it have? Does it have triple four uh, four fifty R's on it, or is it quad, quads? I can't remember. I can't see it off the back of it. But it, either way, I mean, uh, this thing is just cruising. Uh, yeah, yeah. Asmund, of course, awesome. being an Italian design, so uh, you can see kind of that that design work on that. It's mm-hmm. oh. Such yeah, I think uh, it's definitely one of their their most uh, sporty, but also just Ooh. just classy looking boats. I mean, with yeah. kind of that that transparent side panel there too, so you can kind of just see that water line. It's such a cool boat. So yeah, cool stuff. Thanks, Mike Bader, for sharing that on LinkedIn. You know, it was funny. I was telling some people LinkedIn is normally it's all business and it's all you know <laughs> serious, and I got to update my tie and whatever. But LinkedIn, <laughs> it's it's cool to see the boating world on LinkedIn because we're sharing a lot of these fun yeah. uh, boating videos there too, and they're getting shared around. So mm-hmm. um, kind of cool to see stuff like that on LinkedIn where you wouldn't normally think you would. Yeah. Well, and if you guys ever have any cool videos out there, um, you know, that you'd like us to, to share on, on uh, Landon's social hour here or social 10 minutes or so, um, we're always looking for some really cool videos to share and, and promote. I mean, there's just so many cool things that you guys are doing out, out there on the water every day, every week, and uh, we'd love to see it. Yes. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. We're all over the place. 
Mm -hmm. uh, just search Marine Max, shoot us a message. We'd, we'd love to hear from you and hear your boating stories. For sure. Perfect. All, All right. right. Well, we're wrapping it up today. Um, Landon, any other final thoughts? Um, you guys were, you had an, uh, an awesome interview with Carlos and mm -hmm. I was the whole time thinking like, I'm not the fishing type myself, very self-admittedly. I don't know a thing about fishing, but I will 100% be on that boat cheering on the other people, drinking a brewski and having a great time too. <laughs> so invite me to go fishing with you and I'll be moral support. Excellent. So you're, you're the one that's just giving the thumbs up in the background being like, yeah, way to I'll go, take man. The photos. I'll take the photo to be the photographer. There you go. There you run go. the drone. Yep. <laughs> All right, Mr. Kelly Berry, final thoughts from you, sir. Hey, uh, I'm just uh, glad I got to show off a fish to Captain Carlos. You know, uh, <laughs> that's always it, 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 props from a, a, a seasoned veteran in the world of fishing is always a good thing. And uh, it's always cool to learn more about, um, you know, all things fishing and, and really cool FloridaSportFishing.com to, to learn more. Um, and that fish idea, I think once we get done here, I'm going to look through and, and see some of those questionable fish that I'm like, what did I catch here? I'm going to look through and, and find out. <laughs> we know what's happening with the rest of Kelly's day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very Nothing good. productive, I guess. It's all fishing, fishing yeah. on the brain. Well, yeah, definitely a big thank you to Captain Carlos D. Rod Rodriguez from the hit show Florida Sport Fishing. He yep. definitely shines some light. Landon, I also don't really know that much. I know Porgy, and that's all I had, man. There you that's go. All I had. <laughs> Tastes good. Uh, yes, it does. Yes, it does. Awesome. All right. To everyone out there, you can see or hear more episodes of Boating Broadcast and our sister podcast, Boating Tips Live, mm -hmm. Facebook, YouTube, the Marine Max Lifestyle blog. You can even get it through the Marine Max app or Spotify or wherever you listen to your podcasts. You know, mm -hmm. we hope everyone enjoyed our boating broadcast today. And as always, stay healthy and boat happy. We'll see you next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode of From the Helm Boating Broadcast. To keep up with the latest news and notes in the world of boats, be sure to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and wherever podcasts can be heard. Until next time, we'll see you out on the water.